Hello everybody, it's Dr. Yan Yu here, founder of the Calgary Guide to Understanding Disease. Today we're going to be talking about adult pneumonia, its pathogenesis, and clinical findings. As always, before we begin, you can help support us in our work by liking the video just as it's starting out and by subscribing to my channel. With that, let's get started. Pneumonia is an infection of the lower respiratory tract by pathogens, which can be bacteria, viruses, fungi, and or parasites. It's a lower respiratory tract infection as opposed to an upper respiratory tract infection, such as bronchitis. Pneumonia can also be classified by where the patient got infected, whether they're in the community, as in not in the hospital, in healthcare settings, or specifically in hospital settings. So first of all, the pathogenesis process involves exposure to a pathogen via inhalation, aspiration, spread from adjacent body tissues, or through the blood. Three factors tend to make patients more susceptible to pneumonia. First is smoking. Smoking suppresses neutrophil function and of course damages the lung epithelium. Second, you got chronic lung conditions such as COPD, asthma, and lung cancer, which destroys lung tissue and offers pathogens more nidises for infection. Third, there is immune suppression. If the patient has HIV, is septic to begin with, if they are on glucocorticoids, or if they're on chemotherapy, that suppresses the immune response and makes the host or the patient more susceptible for infection. In a susceptible host with a virulent pathogen, that pathogen is allowed to proliferate in the lower airways and the alveoli of the lungs. As a result, there is a systemic inflammatory process towards the invading microbe, systemic meaning in the whole body, as well as a local response in the alveoli themselves. First, we'll talk about the systemic inflammatory response. There's a systemic cytokine release, which results in the disruption of thermal regulation by the hypothalamus. That results in fever and chills and rigors. Locally, at the level of the lungs, alveolar epithelial cells will release chemokines into surrounding tissue to recruit neutrophils to the site of inflammation. The inflammatory response will vary depending on the type of invading pathogen. For example, Streptococcus pneumoniae causes a lobar pattern of response, and Haemophilus influenza causes an interstitial pattern. In terms of a lobar response, that basically means that neutrophils and exudate from plasma accumulate in the alveoli specific to a lung area or a lobe of the lung. Neutrophil and plasma exudate then irritate the airways and attempts to clear the fluid infiltrates from the alveoli leads to phlegm production, which is why the patient coughs and that cough is productive producing phlegm. Further with lobar pneumonia, fluid buildup in one section of the lung actually doesn't allow x-rays to pass through, resulting in a white opacification on the plain film at the site of the fluid buildup. That results in your classic consolidation on chest x-ray. Finally, with lobar pneumonia, a trait that is shared with interstitial pneumonia, the alveolar sacs can be blocked by fluid accumulation, which reduces the exchange of gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen. Less oxygen absorbed means hypoxemia, or low levels of oxygen in the bloodstream. Similarly, less CO2 excreted would lead to hypercarbia, or an increase of CO2 in the bloodstream. These changes in gas concentrations in the blood triggers peripheral and central chemoreceptors to increase the respiratory drive of the patient, which leads to a sensation of shortness of breath, otherwise known as dyspnea. Now, with interstitial pneumonia, this type of pneumonia involves the accumulation of infiltrates such as inflamed cellular debris in the alveolar walls or the spaces between the alveoli and the bloodstream. The accumulation of infiltrates in that area in the interstitial tissue thickens the alveolar walls and increases the diffusion distance for gases to have to diffuse between the alveoli and the capillaries. That also results in the reduced exchange of CO2 and oxygen, resulting in hypoxemia and hypercarbia and triggering the peripheral and central chemoreceptors to increase respiratory drive, which results in dyspnea. In addition, with interstitial pneumonia, the irritated alveolar walls trigger the cough reflex, but since fluid infiltrates are not in the alveoli, attempts to empty the alveoli through coughing doesn't lead to the production of fluid. And so with interstitial pneumonia, you would tend to get dry cough as opposed to a wet or a productive cough. Note that other signs and symptoms of pneumonia exist, such as chest pain, accessory muscle use, and crackles on auscultation, as well as fatigue. These signs and symptoms are less specific to pneumonia than the ones outlined on this slide. And there you have it. 
Thank you for your attention. Again, if you have any thoughts or comments, please let me know via a comment down below. I'd particularly love your input on what slide topic I should do next. Once again, please support us in our work by liking the video and subscribing to my channel. Thanks everybody. See you in the next video.